and gals, welcome to this week's pre-foreclosure daily grind tip of the week. Chris the Drummer Bowes, Bob LaChance. Hopefully everyone had a great 4th of July weekend. Mm -hmm. I know Chris did, did you play any drums or what? No, no drums, just uh, just some fireworks, um, some beach. and Nice, know. nice. Beach and some... You know, beach. Other, other fun things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> We'll leave it at that. We're going to go into the details. <laughs> this is rated PG. But anyway, um, this week's pre-foreclosure tip of the week, uh, we have a lot of good stuff to go over. In particular, we're going to go over three second lien holders, uh, one with uh, SLS, City Mortgage, and Wells Fargo, and what uh, each three are doing uh, today that they weren't doing a little while ago. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to let everyone know our PropTracker.com call is next Friday, our webinar. We have an open Q&A webinar. It opens up with a case study from one of our kick butt members, mm -hmm. um, and this particular case study is going to be awesome. And we go over exactly how they get the deal, they put into the system, they get it closed, and how they get paid. So it's actually really, really, really cool. So if you guys want to check that out, I'll be sending out an email later this week in reference to how to get on it. That's for our PropTracker.com members. We also, we're finishing one of our unbelievable modules on Friday, uh, which is in two days, right? Which is two, uh, sounds tomorrow like, sounds or about two right. days or tomorrow. <laughs> but anyway, it's on our action plan, plan modules. We have over 300 action plans with email campaigns behind them. So that's pretty, pretty sweet. So anyway, this week's pre-foreclosure tip of the week. Chris, we're going to go over, let's go over SLS and City Mortgage and what they're doing right now. Well, basically, um, as a mo it's, it's meant to be kind of a, a motivational tool for, uh, you know, the attorneys and or, or agents, you know, whoever's involved and, and kind of the main... Uh, party to, to reach out to with a short sale but um, every time an extension is requested from either one of these lenders in the second position uh, they, they will add extra uh, to the to the uh, payoff so if if you're requesting an extension on a second mortgage with with SLS and with city mortgage mm -hmm. They typically add what about a thousand bucks each extension. City's a thousand. Uh, SLS usually about two to twenty five hundred. Okay, so just know that the reason, like Chris said, the reason why they're doing this is to give us motivation. Whether you're lost mint company, you're the buyer, you're the investor, you're the agent, it doesn't matter. It gives us more incentive to push to get the deal closed. We're gonna have to push our mortgage brokers or direct lenders to get these things closed. So just know that that those are two huge tips. Uh, the next one is in reference to Wells Fargo. Uh, Wells Fargo changed a couple things, and this is in reference to HELOCs, right? Right, right, right. This is a. They have obviously many departments. One of the departments it's a it's a for second mortgages that are home equity lines, um, and that's all they handle. And basically, um, second lien positions. Right, say. Right, 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 right. Um, at this point now, they're requiring that any um, third party that l looks to get authorization to work or speak on behalf of the borrower uh, now has to, there's, there's two options for them. They either have to be a HUD certified uh, company or they have to actually go all the way and get a, a, an actual power of attorney. Not just an authorization to release information, it has to be an actual like power of attorney form. So if you're a third party loss mitigation company, just know that right up front. If you're dealing with Wells Fargo in the second position, if it is a HELOC, right. if it's a HELOC, home micro line of credit, just know that you're probably going to have to get a, or you will have to get a power of attorney. And if you're also a real estate agent, as of today, that still encumbers real estate agents also. It's not just third party loss mitigation companies. Hey Chris, what was the reason why they changed to that? Because Chris had a long conversation with uh, some one of their reps in the loss mitigation department. Yeah, basically what he was telling me, um, you know, he, straightforward guy. He just was like, you know, the, the the issue we've run into is that too many of the uh, third party, you know, third parties have not adequately represented the seller, and you know, the problem is is that if something goes down, you know, it, it also kind of comes back on us. So this is we have to kind of be, you know, covering our butts as well. As yeah, know, it's not a bad thing. It's just an extra step you got to take. Um, obviously, the the idea is. You're working with sellers anyway, they want to work with you. So if they want to work with you, it should not be a challenge at all getting them to sign it just for that particular property. Right. So not right. a bad thing. But anyway, that's that's a good three that's great <laughs> tips. Actually four with prop tracker, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. But anyway, um all of our prop tracker members, we have our open QA next week, open up with a case study and the latest changes in the short sale and real estate industry. Obviously, you guys know you're reading the papers. 
you're listening to the news, a lot of stuff going down right now. Uh, a lot of good stuff too. Uh, anyway, uh, check out proptracker.com. It's our online real estate management tool and short sale management tool. Um, anyway, that's this week's pre-foreclosure tip of the week. Chris the Drummer Bowles, Bob LaChance. See you guys next week. She might have